Hi, my name is Luke, and uh, this video is going to try and make an illustration of how vapor barriers and wall systems work by looking at old basement windows. Now, this window here used to have a lot of condensation building up on it on a regular basis. It's gotten cold enough right now, it's October, and so the outer air um, is cold, the inner air of the house is warm enough that it can create a lot of condensation if they're in the right circumstances, but although this window is not super clean, um, the condensation is not there anymore. And I'll tell you why. It's because the inside of that window there that no longer opens, um, there's an inner pane there that you can see that's uh, a slider. And I went and just caulked everything shut. It wasn't, wasn't operating anymore anyway. It was already largely caulked and painted, but, uh, but I added some more caulking. And now the inner air, the warm air, does not get to this window anymore. It doesn't get to the cold surface to make condensation. The warm air carries more moisture. If I trap it inside and don't let it get to this cold surface, it won't create condensation. That's how vapor barriers work. I put plastic on the inside of our walls to try to keep that warm, moist air from getting to the cold surface. And we control, uh, control the humidity, we control the, uh, the, the temperatures that way and control the condensation. Condensation getting inside of here without ever breathing out would really increase the uh, the, the rot factor <laughs> would uh, really detract from the life of this wooden window. And so I did not seal the outside here, I didn't add any caulking. It was caulked at one time before we took possession a couple of years ago. But you can see that uh, these seams are pretty big and it's drying to the outside. Whatever moisture that's getting in there is drying. Now, if we take a look at this window here, I went to town on this guy. He was rotting because of uh, some, I think mostly rain. Uh, rot that was getting in there. The seams are really big on this window and rain was getting in there and sitting in there and causing this rot and so what I'm touching here is actually spray foam. I took my spray foam gun, jabbed it into the wood because the wood was so soft I could jab it right in there because it was rotting and uh, injected great stuff wall and floor which is a nice rigid uh, vapor impermeable spray foam. I also had to fix the window pane by, uh, by basically putting a, a board across and squishing the whole thing into place and, uh, and cushioning this window into, into place because it was falling out and added a lot of silicone to hold it in place. And so there's silicone all the way around the outside of the window. There's a lot of silicone now in between the seams as well as some of the spray foam that I used. And this whole thing is now vapor impermeable, which is nice to keep this thing from rotting from rain for sure. But unfortunately, we're getting, probably walk away here, we're getting a lot of condensation building up on the inside of that window. This was actually happening right off the hop because of how well I sealed that sucker, even though when I did it, it wasn't even that cold out yet. It was still summer, but it still gets cold at nights some of the times here in Manitoba. I'm gonna turn off my dehumidifier here. <laughs> Okay, now this guy here, he started with gray, getting a lot of condensation right away. And so what I did to try to stem that is I actually took caulking some more and caulked this inner window. Caulked the pane, caulked all the way around the edge. I was thinking about leaving it openable, but I figured if I made it in vapor impermeable as well, it would uh, help with the condensation, which it did. But not enough, as you can see. It, it, it helped a lot right away, but now... Basically, there's still moist air in there, and I think it's slowly seeping in from this window or maybe even around the buck, between the buck and the concrete of the, the foundation, seeping in there, and it's just never breathing out. There's just, uh, well, I mean, it is probably really, really slowly, but there's just, there's so much in there that it's just going to get a lot of condensation. I'm going to see what kind of tricks I can come up with to try and help that, but this is basically a good illustration of what happens when you have a wall with a vapor barrier on both sides of the wall. It, uh, it's not breathing into the house, it's not breathing out, it's just trapped. And you, if you have condensation, it's gonna be bad. If I had insulation in this, it would be even worse. The higher R value you have, the more risk of condensation there is. I'm basing a lot of these statements off of uh, papers that I've read from buildingscience.com, especially by a guy named Joe Liebrick. Look him up. Uh -huh. All right. Um, and so that's how a double vapor barrier wall works. Let's go take a look at... This is my bathroom window. And this is uh, a window that is breathing both inside and outside. 
I caulked the window panes to try and seal those up to make them not drafty, which they weren't hugely, but I figured I might as well do it while I got the caulking gun out. And I put some uh, foam tape all the way around the four sides of this one, as well as the outside one. And this one's only held in place by hooks, as you can see, but they're really tight, and that foam is doing a good job of really taking down the draft here, I think. We'll see how well it does when it gets even colder out at minus 40 here. But, um, minus 40 Celsius, by the way. Anyway, um, but you can see this window is really clean, really, uh, really clear. There's no fog really building up on it, no condensation. There's a little bit of, uh, fog there that's actually from a caulking smear. Don't mind me, I didn't do a perfect job. Bleh. All right. And so this is an example of a, a wall that has no vapor barrier that's impenetrable. It's, uh, it's breathing both inside and outside. This is what you would call uh, a vapor retarder, like a class 2 or class 3, probably class 3, maybe even higher, um, if you want to get into the technical spots of it. But anyway, um, that's all I'm going to say on this for now. I am going to see if I can make some videos later to, uh, to try to illustrate uh, more about vapor barriers right from uh, new construction, that kind of thing. Uh, hopefully I'll get to that. We'll see. Bye for now.